Hey team, this is Coach A here, and welcome to Unit 4, Day 2, Little Country, Big Footprint. So, our objective for the day is after reading Imperial Rivalries Part 1, Portugal, P Spain, and the Pope divvy the New World, learners will be able to cite evidence and compare sources through four text-based questions, scoring 66%, RH910.1.6. So, here are our guiding questions for today's lesson. Connect Portugal's geography and its colonial ambitions. And how would you summarize the Portuguese place in the transatlantic slave trade? Our I can statements for the day are I can cite textual evidence, I can compare sources, and I can connect Portugal's geography and its colonial ambitions. So, to geography twice, why? I've been going over it all year, but geography matters. Just so much. When you're walking to school and you have the option of a lazy decline or a set of stairs, which one do you take? That is a micro example of how much geography matters. If we don't focus on geography, we can't really understand, A, what is farmed there, what those people eat, why they eat it. Everything is in geography. And when it comes to Portugal's geography, it has a long shoreline, with many harbors and rivers flowing westward to the Atlantic Ocean. So it is in a constant exchange of cultural ideas with Islamic kingdoms, making it the center of technology and knowledge in that area. This area is called the Iberian Peninsula. Rather than fight across Spain to trade with other countries, Portugal became a seafaring people. The Portuguese really did struggle to expel the Moors, and that kind of is ingrained in their identity because it is a heavily Catholic identity, and that's going to be really important later on in this unit. But speaking of geography, let's fire up the old geography machine and really take a look. So... Again, here we are on the Iberian Peninsula, and there's no way for Portugal to trade with its other neighbors without going through Spain, which, as you can imagine, they weren't besties. So, Portugal had to get very good at sailing around Spain. As we learned about, the Moors had invaded and taken over the Iberian Peninsula, which will speed up the Iberian Peninsula technologically and culturally compared to the cold, dreary North European nations. And let's talk about rivers. Because rivers are really important at this time. As you know, they didn't have cars, they didn't have trains. So the best way for you to get a product into town was to hook a river. So that's why you're going to see a river like this is going to have bigger names, aka bigger cities, based on it, versus here, landlocked area with very few rivers. And that is why geography really, really matters. The other aspect of it is Portugal is tiny. It, how tiny is it? Well, if you took Portugal and put it in Pennsylvania, it would it would stop roughly about Harrister Lancaster. You wouldn't even get to eastern Pennsylvania. So, tiny nation easily invaded, and completely dependent upon the sea. Hence why their most famous royal is Prince Henry the Navigator. He is the son of John I of Portugal, and he was not in line to the throne. So he decided he would actually be in people's history books. How did he do it? Well, he coordinated the mathematical and navigational learning of Portugal especially at the Institute of the Say Grace. It emphasized imperial expansion 
for the glory of Portugal. In 1412, uh, he ordered the first Portuguese expedition to the Canary Islands and the African coast. Portugal funded these explorations up and down the coast from 1419 to 1460. He really wanted to make his mark and expand the Portuguese empire. Like we said about the Institute of the Segres. So the Institute of the Segres was an important research center in Portugal, where several breakthroughs and discoveries in mathematics and naval technology occurred. Primarily, though, it was just a place for sailors and scientists to exchange information techniques regarding shipbuilding, maps, and organizing expeditions. Despite historical romanticism, despite historical romanticism, despite historical romanticism, no, I didn't, like, I didn't have a problem with my technology there. I'm foreshadowing. Despite historical romanticism, there is little evidence that it was a proper school. In actuality, the evidence says that Prince Henry employed Jewish cartographers from the area, and this was some way to Catholicize the information. Just like the technological advances. So when it comes to technological advances, they really did try to push that all of this stuff, the cross staff, the astrolabe, the compass, and the caravel were all brand new Portuguese inventions just out of the Institute of the Segres, but in all actuality, they're mostly Persian. Like we said, there is a lot of cultural exchange with the former Persian Empire, and they got a lot of their stuff. There's examples of cross staffs and astrolabes from the 13th century in Persia. The caravel is designed off of Arab traders, smaller vessels, and the compass we know rode the Silk Road to the Royal Road from China. Results of Portuguese exploration. Well, the Portuguese went down as pretty stout explorers in European history. Bartholomew Diaz reached the southern tip of Africa and discovered the Cape of Good Hope and the Indian Ocean, colonized select areas of Africa, and it wasn't until Vasco da Gama opened trade with India utilizing this new sea route in 1498. Now, this enabled the Portuguese to become very wealthy because they now had the fastest sea route. We just talked about this. They did not have trucks. You couldn't put it on a tractor trailer and move spices from India all the way through the Ottoman Empire, all the way through Europe into the Atlantic. No, the fastest way, of course, was to put it on a boat where you could put a ton of it and move it quite easily. The Portuguese also did make a uh, first direct European maritime trade with China in Macau. But they also were the first in another thing, and that is the transatlantic slave trade. So in 1443, the first group of slaves arrive in Lisbon. The Portuguese are the first Europeans to participate in the modern slave trade, and the Portuguese participated in the slave trade and created a huge market for slaves. This is something that you have to make a note of, whereas often people point to the fact that the slave trade persisted in Africa previously and after the point, but it was the demand that the Portuguese absolutely spiked and <laughs> so as supply or in demand increased, the supply would end up catching up with it, forcing the traders to find more and more and more slaves and shifting the balance of the slave trade inorganically. 5.8 million Africans were taken into slavery on Portuguese vessels. Now, 5.8 million is a lot of people, but I'm not sure if you understand just how many people that is. That's why I have my trusty calculator here. 
So that's 5.8. But here's the problem. You're thinking about the billions of people on the planet. That didn't exist at the time. Population of the Earth. In 1500? About. I'll, I'll use the newest estimation. 461 million people. That is 1.258% of the global population found their way to bondage on Portuguese ships. Hence why this, by Chadish Arda, Chad, Chadish? Chadist? From Chad, artist Kiliwani Kiahende put up plantation prosperity and nightmare in Lisbon. And the European slave trade can not be discussed without the influence of Portugal. Pedro Cabral, Cabral claimed present day Brazil for Portugal in 1500. And this is where the vast majority of the slaves meant for the New World ended up. The arrival of Europeans and the demand for slaves in the Americas, specifically Brazil and the Caribbean and the southern United States, increased the slave trade dramatically. By 1571, a string of outposts connected Portugal with Africa, India, the South Pacific Islands, and Japan. Brazil, though, will be the crown jewel of the of colonial Portugal and a nightmare for the natives. This is Cais do, do Valongo. Sorry for pronunciation always. In Brazil, between 1811 and 1831, 20 years, more than 1 million enslaved Africans arrived on slave slave ships at this wharf. It was discovered as they were build, they were laying the foundation of a new building, and they discovered this wharf, which has now been preserved as a historical landmark. And you're going to learn more about it in today's New ZLA article. But don't forget, you absolutely have to annotate. Our new grading system includes three points for each of the correct answers and two points for each of the correct use of our annotation so make sure you are highlighting subjective statements in blue you're highlighting where you found the answer to the questions in yellow green should be anytime you come across one of our vocabulary words and red don't forget to ask me a question good question not like hey what does this word mean google it i want you to ask me real questions and if you do it, you'll get two extra points. So please be on your way. Thanks for checking in. I would really appreciate it if you subscribed, because if we get to 100 subscribers, I get a custom URL. But other than that, I'll see you next time. Be smart. Be safe. Bye, guys.